Hello and welcome to Postgres FM, a new weekly show about all things PostgreSQL. I am Michael, I'm from PG Mustard, and this is my co-host Nikolai, founder of Postgres AI. Hello Nikolai, how are you doing? Hello, hello, hello. Doing great. How are you? I'm, st- I'm still I'm still traveling, still traveling right now in Prague. Prague is beautiful, so let's let's talk about some Postgres stuff. Oh, so good. Very jealous, but also I'm I'm in the UK and it's about 28 degrees at the moment, so it feels like summer finally. Yeah. Um, good. Yes. So today I was keen to talk about hosting of Postgres. So specifically when should people choose a managed Postgres uh, service versus DIY or do it yourself um, should be we even be considering do it yourself these days um, if they opt for manage what what are the best options out there that kind of thing so yeah uh, I'm really really keen to hear your thoughts on this um, my, what are you seeing at the moment my thoughts are you we should always do do, do DIY we should always go DIY path we should always compile kernel of Linux and so on. I'm joking, of course. But uh, like, it, it's uh, the opinion is changing actually, right? Because uh, if you are DBA in, for example, back in 2005 to 10, and you see something uh, which uh, re- re- substitutes, replaces part of your work, uh, probably you will you will be very skeptical, right? What do you think, like? Well, yeah, Um, I see the default these days. So I deal probably with more smaller companies, startups um, generally, and almost everybody, I can't think of the last time I saw somebody starting a new project DIY, but I do see, I do hear and see about it a lot more in larger companies. And some of those startups that are getting big, they're starting to consider uh, maybe for cost reasons, maybe for a little bit more control, uh, they're starting to consider taking things, uh, if not kind of completely DIY, at least you know, uh, on Am- like still on Amazon, but not RDS, for example. So right. I'm, yeah, I, I'm seeing the default change. If that makes any sense. Uh, have you seen ever like a company who started uh, like ten or fifteen years ago, and uh, they started with uh, with self-managed Postgres and then moved to RDS or something? Or? Oh, good. Yes. So I think. Um, I think I actually saw them blog about it recently, so I think it's okay mm. to mention that the team at Auto Trader, uh, which is a big uh, second-hand car, uh, the, the kind of second-hand car dealership, uh, online dealership in the UK, they uh, moved, I think they're in the process of, or maybe now have completed their migration to Google Cloud SQL um, from what I believe were, if not completely self-hosted, then self-managed databases. Which I saw a couple of examples as well, uh, including some very large companies, and uh, I, I've noticed that they just understand that uh, uh, managing Postgres probably is uh, very difficult. O- also, I think it depends on how big uh, your databases and workload. If uh, you manage to split, uh, for example, two microservices and you have dozens of databases, so you can easier like it's easier for you to go to RDS because limits are quite far. <laughs> so, so, but if you have very lo- heavily loaded data, huge database, probably it will be challenging because, uh, for example, d- disks on, on RDS, uh, regular RDS, they are like network attached to EBS volumes. So, if, uh, if they're not local, and uh, so latency is a bit higher, of course. So, you, you should, like it's 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 tricky. But I saw examples, uh, uh, specifically microservice architecture and very big company. They decided by purpose to get rid of any self-managed. So, but uh, as usual, it takes many years. So it's a combination usually. Right. Well, so that's a good. Like, is that a, a sit, almost a rule of thumb that if are we talking about if somebody's talk, uh, got either one or a lot of smaller databases, uh, there's probably not a good. Well, have, are there any good reasons if I've got one or lots of smaller databases to not use a managed service? Well, I think f- f- uh, the best candidates for managed service, if, if, if you consider some already grown company, if you have many databases, probably like two big reasons I see. First is uh, to move uh, smaller databases to managed services and just for t- 
to not to think about uh, backing up uh, replication of mm-hmm. the follower about that. but also uh, there is another big reason like it's easier it's, uh, this this reason mo- understood by usually usually by upper management not uh, by dbas because dbas uh, usually think like let's do everything yourself like let's keep it in our hand let's have con- uh, or, or let's have access to pg data and so on and, or like process list and so on but upper management thinks like it's it's better to rely on uh, amazon or google engineers and their infrastructure in terms of backups and uh, related like rpo rto related as slos service level objective objectives uh, uh, instead of uh, trying to hire a lot of good experts it's very hard to find good experts and scale the process of their work so this second reason i think it's for bigger companies it's very important uh, that's why like like rds and others uh, are growing i think um, i don't know i don't have numbers unfortunately but i think uh, from as, as you said like uh, Everyone is on <laughs> managed already, but not everyone actually. Not everyone. And sometimes people go back actually. Sometimes, but not often. Yeah. In, well, could you give us? Do you know any any examples or the reasons why they went backwards? Well, the price is a big, a big uh, mm-hmm. reason, of course. Uh, if you manage Postgres yourself on, for example, on EC2 instances, and you have, you can have uh, like. Uh, um, one year, three year contracts. There are ways to optimize the price, and also it's that it will be definitely uh, cheaper than RDS. So then you can uh, do additional op- infrastructure optimization in terms of backups and various c- clones uh, for non production use and so on. Uh, so it's it's of course uh, like much cheaper. Like I would say like roughly like up to t- 2x times cheaper, but cost is sometimes not a big driver I, I i think it will change by the way we are in the, in the beginning of some crisis coming so maybe reasons will like reasoning will start changing but uh, also moving back sometimes like a weaker reason is uh, te- pure technical so to, to, to troubleshoot some weird things it's not a fun when you go to rds and say something like we have an issue and their engineers say it's a postgres issue you go to postgres experts uh, even sometimes to to postgres uh, mailing list or some various chats and uh, they say it's our uh, it's not postgres rds is not postgres work with rds engineers it's yeah. not fun to be between and to, if if very very difficult incidents happen and you don't have uh, full access, so I, I'm, I've, I've been there a couple of times with my clients. It's like it's not fun. <laughs> so this is a technical reason to move back to and have, he, take full control. But you need to have very strong experts. To I think do that. that's a really good point about the about the. Oh, there is third third reason. There is yeah. third reason: uh, various extensions and capabilities yeah. that RDS doesn't offer. Right. This is the one I wanted to bring up. I think this is more of a reason to start on a DIY or maybe maybe one of the only reasons to start on DIY is if you really want an extension that isn't supplied by your um, the managed service provider that you want to go with I, th- I am seeing some of the newer ones really aggressively go after installing lots of the extensions but if until a few years ago a lot of them really didn't have even some of the contrib modules I think as an example I, I think Heroku still doesn't uh, let people install auto explain which comes with postgres Heroku, unfortunately there are big there were recently big discussions on hacker news so why Heroku has not been developed and like uh, it's it's a pity because it was very it, it was a pioneer of managed postgres uh, many years ago it was so great but then they uh, were started to after acquisition by, by by salesforce i guess they started to lag in terms of pricing i remember helping several companies at least to uh, migrate to rds because of just because of pricing and also capabilities so i, I think heroku unfortunately I, I i have currently three clients who want to migrate and they say let's not do our let's not let's postpone a little bit implementation of uh, cloning stuff we postgres are developing because we are in the process of process of migrating off Heroku so so I don't see anyone who is migrating to Heroku unfortunately but Heroku was great in the be- in, in early and in back back to like 10 years ago 
Well, I still oh. think they have some features that others don't. So I think they, they come with better defaults. So once you upgrade off the smallest instance, they keep changing your, uh, your various settings to keep up with your instance size in a better way, I think, than some of the bigger ones like uh, RDS. Um, I had a, a friend recently move from Heroku to, to Crunchy Bridge, which is one of the newer ones, uh, a lot of the team be behind Heroku. But he, they, he migrated. I was really surprised by some of the defaults still there and the, there was uh, not as not as good documentation, but everything else looks amazing. Um, but he ended up migrating back to Heroku and upping his instance size. I think he thought some of the reliability was was on the Heroku side, but it turned out it might have been something he was doing instead. So I, th I ha it was interesting to see somebody that does rely on some of the Heroku features uh, really valuing those and, mo and ending up migrating back. And the other thing I think they do that most of the others don't do nicely yet, at least, is major version upgrades, uh, mostly for you. Uh, now I think they require a little bit of downtime, but um, yeah, I don't. I don't see. I only just recently saw that added to Google Cloud SQL. So I thought that was quite a nice thing that they still do that others don't. Well, good thing here is that uh, like the choice number of cho like yeah. the variety increases a lot uh, and you touched crunchy bridge so we should al already add one more um, set of players here which are based on uh, kubernetes operators right and yeah. uh, and like i know alexander kukushkin the maintainer of patroni not long ago developed major uh, upgrade automation for the a building block of uh, their uh, operator it's called spilo so it's like uh, uh, container image uh, for a, a very uh, uh, ready to use in aws first of all but not only i think uh, and uh, he, he managed to achieve a good level of uh, major upgrade automation with a, a small downtime uh, so, so it's it's improving and but i i want to blame uh, managed services for one thing uh, they usually don't provide access uh, to look at PG data and at least uh, uh, at least to have uh, uh, physical replication connection, right? I remember like four, day, day, four years ago or so, I met um, the founder of Ivan, who is now big, very big, uh, they raised a lot and they grow very fast. Uh, and I asked him like, like, like okay, very good. You you are building similar similar offering to RDS, but with more flexibility and more features probably, and so on. Uh, do, can you provide a, a physical replication connection and access to pitch data and so on? He said by default no, but if you contact support, it's, it's possible. Guess what? Uh, recently, their support answered. Of course, no, it's not possible. So this this hole is closed also and uh, lack of physical replication connection means some kind of vendor lock-in so if you yeah. want to migrate off managed mo managed service you must use only logical replication connection which is quite tricky and complex and have has a lot of issues uh, if you have very heavy uh, uh, workload well, and we're talking about about big instances right because sm smaller ones we still have the option of uh dump them in the store, I guess. Right, but uh, well, what 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 is what does small mean today? Small okay. f today for me, it's less than one terabyte already. Okay, great. <laughs> so, I I would I would not dump uh, like I, I of course like when you do logical, actually initialization is dump restore basically right. So we need to do it anyway. Even for 10 terabyte database, we need to do it, and there are ways to speed it up, but but it's not fun. I would rather prefer physical copy of uh, files. Awesome. Let's talk about upgrades another day, maybe. Um, it feels like a whole good topic. And actually, I'll put it in the show notes, but um, there was, you did a really good panel with a few people. I think it was at Postgres Vision recently. Um, I enjoyed that. So yeah. I'll, I'll I, up here. It's, it's interesting. Yesterday, they invited me to Postgres. Postgres Europe conference uh, to talk about uh, upgrades again and they also accepted uh, database branching talk but I want uh, to say once again I, like it's my public position that uh, like actually I already booked hotel to Berlin uh, late late October I, I'm going to come to like it's very good but I asked them do they record 
talks do uh, yeah. do we have plans to publish it later then the talks later if they don't i probably will not come because this is my position everything should be recorded and published later like i understand this is a huge conference 500 people uh, some of them will probably come to my talk but i want to have a recorded session as well and uh, to be able to share and refer later to my materials because uh, like it's for me it's a huge trip so that's why like we talked today and uh, this is good because uh, we, uh, if someone is interested in the c- comparison of managed versus non managed and kubernetes we can send the link right so yeah absolutely i, I, I must say all postgres all, all postgres conference organizers record re- please record and publish share and uh, full disclosure i'm not sure you knew this nikolai but i'm actually on the panel for the oh, pg conf yes. eu yes <laughs> yeah i knew it but i forgot yes <laughs> okay uh, okay so yeah um, excited <laughs> to see those hopefully if so, we can so you also you also can uh, uh, pass my words to the organizers right <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it's possibly worth giving a quick shout out to some of the work you've been doing on the Postgres TV channel to to publish some of these talks. So some of these talks that were given that were not recorded in the past at different conferences, you've picked some of the better right. ones and uh, recorded them and put them on. Uh, remind me of the name of the series. It's called it's called Postgres Open Talks because talks should be open as well but like the idea of that series conflicts with my position to come to conferences that only recorded of course but so if, if every every conference starts to record and publish later uh, then probably this series will be over but i will be happy actually but that's so. it that's <laughs> a sign you really care about solving the problem isn't it if you if right. if what you've built i mean i had the same experience we're taking a definite tangent here but i had the same experience with my browser extension for uh, redirecting people on the postgres documentation i use nowadays it. Yeah, well, yeah, but hopefully you won't need to soon. The, the, right. The, well, actually, uh, I should stop using it. Right. There you right. Go. right. So, yeah, uh, but I'm happy because I don't because I didn't want this extension to exist. I, w- I would much rather they were, uh, it worked uh, first time. So, yeah. Yeah, anyway, Goog- Google search it. results are much better. I, I mean, we, we know the problem, but maybe our audience doesn't know. The problem is that, uh, like, until very recently, if you search for something related to Postgres, you saw some versions up to 7.4 so like 7.3 and so on and uh, like very very old and it's it was not fun to 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 then like and people okay shared these links very old thinking it's it's not old and so on like a lot of confusion but it it was recently solved and i i recently saw some example of not good uh, uh, occurrence maybe should i should post it to the mailing list but uh, like 99 percent it works very well right now so Sadly, yep. I don't think there's much we can do in the on the Postgres side for for specific bad examples, other than let yeah. time play out. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so the the worst thing for me was sometimes I'd forget that it was an old version, read it, and then not realize about a feature. Uh, so yeah, it was sometimes it was even worse than just having to click through. Just anyway, uh, sorry. Back to probably should get back to uh, we, hosting. We, we we've got off topic upgrades, off topic yeah, <laughs> off topic conference and off topic uh, br- uh, search results in Google. Yeah, okay, a lot of top let's, topics. Yeah, so let's assume we don't need an extension that uh, that we can't get on a provider. Um, we don't have a really experienced DBA team, and we're not expecting to have more than a terabyte of data anytime soon. What are you thinking in terms of like which which managed services would you tend to lean towards? Uh, in what circumstances? Well, uh, I would choose the like if it depends on the on which cloud you use. Maybe you are not on cloud, mm-hmm. in cloud, on cloud. Sometimes, like very very rarely, but sometimes people don't use clouds. But if you're on cloud, uh, you probably should just choose the offering they provide. But sometimes it's awful. <laughs> like a few years ago, uh, I would not recommend uh, Google Cloud SQL to anyone. They had only eight uh, knobs to tune in from from two hundred some eight eighty something, like almost three hundred uh, setting parameters, and it was not flexible, not ready to to. You cannot tune it. You like it's not good. But uh, I don't, I don't remember some other uh, uh, problems uh, their offering had. But right now it's improving a lot. So very quickly, right? Since since we mentioned yeah, since we mentioned uh, Postgres TV, we had uh, uh, Ilya Kosmodimiansky and I. We had great guest uh, Hanu Crossing, who was 
in, in the past was um, uh, Skype uh, database architect developed a lot of things in Skype uh, and uh, he talked about uh, uh, vacuum issues and it was a great talk so if if interested in vacuum issues in Postgres uh, go check this uh, presentation on postgres.tv uh, and uh, he, he works at Google right now so Cloud SQL has very very strong uh, experts and uh, it's improving and they also recently released uh, alloy db right so it's like it's very also interesting it, like among all uh, postgres uh, offering uh, you can choose in cloud they are like almost pure postgres like rds postgres almost pure so nobody except Amazon engineers can say there are no patches. Of course, there are some patches there. So, so but, but there are also very different databases like uh, Aurora, which has a different storage, or recent NeonDB, which like open source Aurora, also with different storage. Uh, so we cannot say it's already Postgres. Like it looks like Postgres, feels like Postgres, but not always. B but there are also much more different like alloy db is it's quite different they have interesting idea to have uh, column store right in memory in addition to row store so row store converted to column store to have very fast aggregates for anal analytical workloads or we have also yugabyte which is not postgres at all but kind of look looks like postgres so among all these options it's hard to choose right Right. <laughs> I guess it depends so much on the use case, and I like. I think you're right. I think if the if you don't need anything special, and you you're fully committed to a single cloud provider at the moment already, it makes sense by default to go with theirs, unless you know you read the fine print and there's a, a really good reason not to. Or go on. If you, on, for example, on Google or Azure or I don't any any an, like, and you committed to be on this cloud. You still may think to use not their own Postgres uh, managed servers, but also uh, offering from companies like Ivan or ScaleGrid because they work on all. So you will have yeah. API and uh, UI ready to work on any cloud if you just if you move or ex expand to other cloud providers. So it's also interesting. But you know what we should choose? We should choose Kubernetes. The only question is. I mean, Kubernetes uh, uh, operators or uh, products like like Stagress. Uh, why? Be like because this is the same like managed, but more power. You have access and everything if you need to diagnose and so on. The only question is when. Maybe not today. Maybe tomorrow, right? Because still they are they have like it's they they are st started a few years ago and they're still very young. But I'm sure in five years. A lot of users will, will prefer uh, Kubernetes full, under their full control uh, compared to um, uh, fully managed by cloud provider uh, services. What well, do you think? Especially, well, I think for people that are using Kubernetes themselves, which is a growing number uh, for their application side, I think those people, once they've built up that muscle and they, they understand it and they understand the, the sharp edges, um, then yeah, I think it. I think it does make a lot of sense. All of the initial, I think there was a lot of fear, um, and uh, what, what is it? Fud, fear, uncertainty. I don't know. Is it denial? Uh, but I didn't see any good arguments against it, and it does seem to really help in a few very specific ways. But equally, I don't see most small companies needing it. Like I think there's like a scale where it becomes really useful, or like a. Uh, when you need to provide a certain service level, um, maybe you have a really, really low tolerance for downtime or absolute zero data loss requirement. And that's really a hot, you know, that kind of uh, really high level thing that everyone thinks they need or want, but not everyone actually is willing to pay for maybe is the main criteria. Um, but yeah, I, I think, I don't see any reason why not, but I do think managed, I do, I do think it won't be self-managed. I think a lot of people will then pay for somebody else to manage that for them, uh, still to not need that Kubernetes uh, expertise in-house, at least in the early days of a startup. Maybe, but with uh, this approach, Kubernetes-based, uh, maybe you can hire some 
experts who, and maybe you can, we can hire a vendor of this Kubernetes uh, product uh, yeah. for Postgres. But uh, with this approach, you can install anything. You, call it, you have, ex- like Postgres is ve- very well known for its extensibility. Yeah. But fully managed offering always limits this. For example, timescale extension is available only on timescale cloud. But right? that's, that's due to license. I, I mean, right? among, among managed Postgres, it's not available on RDS and bec- will never be available there because uh, timescale thinks it's uh, a reason to, for users to go to their cloud offering instead of RDS. By the way, what do you think? Uh, how su- successful will be this uh, approach? Like we the have some very good extension, yeah. very popular. We we will have it on only on our managed service. So it I saw I saw a really I think um, the founder of Oriol DB gave a really good talk recently where he described some of some extensions are kind of normal extensions they add a little bit of function yeah so they add a little bit of functionality to postgres that makes it a little bit better in a certain way and he then also added a category of yeah i think he did call them super extensions so citus timescale i think he included oreo um basically extensions that are doing so much they're changing things really fundamentally at certain levels and actually they change it so much that they can almost be considered they're not a fork because they are an extension but they have some characteristics of a fork where do they play nicely together um what's you know um how yeah how easily can you migrate it's like not fork but different database right almost yeah exactly almost a different database um so yeah, I'd, I think I can see why it would work for Timescale because if you really want their expertise, they are the best at supporting it and uh, going to their cloud makes a lot of sense. But that's a really good reason for picking DIY as well. If you really want the Timescale functionality and some of it, it seems incredibly good even for non-time series workloads. Like, I think, did you see they did their skip scan implementation? Mm-hmm. That's super useful in loads of workloads. So there's... Oops. There's reasons to want that, and if you want it, but you aren't ready to go to Timescale as your managed service provider for some reason, you can't. You have to DIY um, in a way, or at least you know hybrid. Um, so yeah, I think there's. I, I do think you're right, um, but I, I'm seeing actually a little bit more of a an excitement around these services that abstract even more away from you, and they come. They come with I think uh, limitations at the moment, and they're very very new. But services like Superbase or Neon is uh, looks exciting. But on the on the I know it's not Postgres, but on the MySQL side, scale uh, what's it called? Planet Scale. Um, these services, I can see the excitement in the kind of you know early startup CTO level. They're promising them that you start with this today, and we'll scale with you. You can go, we can scale up, we can scale out, and you don't have to handle any of that yourself. You just keep talking to us like we're your database. And that, that I think, even it it might not be, uh, there, there might be some hidden dark secrets that are, that are yet to come out of the, you know, the reality of that. But it seems super compelling to me as a as a simple option. I don't need super complex things. What, what do, do you think, think about security issues with the services? Because, for example, if if you uh, are a customer of uh, Amazon, uh, you you can like you have trust with them. Like they don't access your data in RDS, although they they could, right? Like it's uh, there is some trust. But if it's a smaller player uh, and th- they run your your databases with your data inside their AWS account, for example, like how to achieve good trust here? Well, I think security is a really good point. I think reliability as well. You know, AWS, there's two angles. One, we they've got a track record of good uptime, good reliability. And two, if, they, if you go down or if they go down and therefore your service goes down, half the internet's down as well. So customers aren't that surprised that your service isn't running because nothing's you know their spotify isn't working or their you know netflix isn't working so it's or you know so you i think there's a few things you get with these big players that people underestimate a little bit and with these new ones they sometimes they're built on some really complex um infrastructure to handle some of this that stuff that that does that does fail and sometimes in very spectacular ways and could can result in a lot more downtime than the normal few minutes so i think complexity does come at a cost uh, or sorry 
they're they're taking away the complexity from you but they're adding it on their side um to handle it all and i i don't know i don't know that i would trust uh, something that needed that uh, uh, for me as a database performance expert yeah. they add complexity because uh, in if i manage postgres myself i can ex- ins- install very useful extensions in addition to pgstat statements uh, let's let's talk about performance right yeah uh, pgstat kcache and pg weight sampling uh, these extensions uh, add two important dimensions to 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 pgstat statements one is physical so you can see disk io pgstat kcache disk io and cpu even c- system cpu user cpu can text switches and so on and another other PG wet sampling, uh, it pro- it provides similar analysis like performance insights in AWS RDS, uh, and uh, without these two extensions, it's very hard to understand, for example, uh, which query uh, consumes a lot of CPU, but not very data intensive. Sometimes it happens, or similar things. Uh, PG statements sometimes cannot answer some questions, right? And uh, if you don't have performance insights like uh, like RDS has, uh, view, you are, sometimes you are like very blind. So, so so they add complexity in terms of uh, query analysis and performance optimization to me. Because with these, with these two extensions and proper monitoring uh, complexity, like it, it makes very simple to perform top-down analysis of, of workload and find uh, the worst queries in, in some uh, angle. So, agree or no? <laughs> yeah, well, I think we're talking about different ends of the spectrum. I, I, I think maybe you're right that that's the kind of thing that, pe- that the CTO at a startup picking, um, let's say, uh, let's click on Planet Scale because it's not even Postgres. Let's say they pick Planet Scale today. Maybe they're not aware of that kind of limitation all the way down the line, or that they're completely reliant on planet scales tooling I in order to get that insight. Kind of scale is not a good example because the people choose planet scale of my MySQL users because they are also developers of Vitesse, and uh, if you need to build very big system that that requires sharding, it's actually almost standard de facto. So you probably will go there because of that. Right or, or or use Vitesse and and that's it. I, like plain scale has like it's interesting. It it it's very specific example and uh, I I'm interested in that example. But it it will move us away from our main topic right now. Well, so, well um, how about uh, Superbase then? In terms Superbase is for smaller things. projects also very specific. They they like they do very great thing, uh, but for smaller projects mostly. Like I think uh, at the moment. At the moment, right? But uh, the, the their main offering is like like we provide you out of box uh, API authentication uh, capabilities and this uh, real time like uh, fire, fire fire Firebase like uh, exactly right thing. But but uh, the question is like what do you offer if my database is thirty terabytes and I have thirty thousand TPS? I need specific uh, uh, performance analysis tools. I need uh, to be sure that you will survive, for example, five terabytes of wall per day uh, uh, backed up properly, and so on. And this question is interesting. I'm not sure Superbase is ready for this scale yet. So no, but who it like? I'm thinking, looking through the ones I've got. I think EDB, for example, came out with a managed service recently, and Crunchy, of course. Both of those are Postgres consultancies turned into managed service providers. Are they the? Would you would you think about those? Do you think they might have some answers to this kind of thing? I I'm very negative today. Uh, for EDB, <laughs> I wish they pref- they provide better consulting uh, still because I have a couple of clients over the last few years, not couple, several clients who. Uh, uh, suffered from their consulting, uh, but it's good for me because uh, th- they went to our uh, small shop and we fixed problems. So I'm, I I've not, haven't checked their uh, managed uh, service. I don't know. No 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 comments here. Maybe it's good, but again, like it's it's very difficult <laughs> choice, right? So like yeah, many many choice. But RDS is is growing like. Google is interesting. Uh, Microsoft has a power of Citus, so it's it's a very interesting time we live in. But again, in in few years, most people will choose Kubernetes based. I think. So I like you <laughs> heard it here first. Um, so again, 
I said, you heard it here first. Probably not first. Uh, yeah. People have been talking about this for a while. Awesome. Right. I know we could probably talk about this topic for quite a long time. Um, is there any last things you wanted to add before we wrap up? Uh, well, um, I think physical connection is a big limiting factor. And every company who wants to deal with managed Postgres should think about this. Do they need it? And also low-level diagnostics capabilities. So if they are okay with it, without it, it's it's go like it's it's, it's a go for for this managed service. But uh, for me, sometimes it's sad. I, I have many clients who work on RDS and other uh, managed services, and I like helping them as well because sometimes it's fun to deal with. Uh, they're uh, like support engineers. It's sometimes it's left lengthy discussions, but uh, like it, it's a specific kind of fun, I would say. But in general, like I think we have like uh, EDB uh, called it big animal, right? We yes. have huge zoo of animals of various <laughs> kinds, right? And uh, I, li- I I definitely like uh, the the specific uh, uh, breed that that uh, associated with Kubernetes. So let's probably l- talk about this area some sometime soon as well. Sounds good. Wonderful. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, I'm gonna put a bunch of these links in our show notes. Um, we welcome ideas, suggestions for future topics. Um, and yeah, thank you so much, Nikolai. Hope you have a good I- week. I also thank you. I also want to thank everyone who provided feedback to Michael, uh, and I wanted to say you can provide feedback to me as well. So, like, but <laughs> for, for Michael is also good. And don't forget to subscribe and also share. Please share this channel, this Postgres to the FM link, and and links to specific episodes. This will help us to grow. Thank Wonderful. you, Michael. Take care. Speak soon. Bye. Bye.